So we've all kind of heard a little bit about uh, Android for Work and how it's kind of coming out of its shell. And we're bringing this, the whole idea behind bringing your own device to work where you have personal device also being used for work devices as well. And the gist of that is Bingo device has two long men carrying two phones or one personal phone and one business phone. And people sometimes want to carry one for both. The solution for Google is to allow you to use this idea of multi-user in the Android operating system. And it basically having two dual personas, similar to how you'd have potentially even on your own workstation. Uh, Android for Work is the testing stage, but the author of its Ars Technica article has been following it since its cumbersome first appearance last year to a much more functional test version called the Android Management Experience. Stand, sadly, it's still only in a test drive website, and it doesn't seem to work as functionally as the operating system like Microsoft's Intune system, but it's certainly an indication that the business customers really want this type of functionality. So with, with Android with Work, you set up a, you can set up a device policy, and the company's device is it's, it's pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. You can set up expiration dates for device passwords, a number of old passwords, and so on, and you can block different services like Google Now and for so on so forth. Uh, Cheaper, you've, you've actually taken this this uh, for a test drive recently, haven't you? Actually, I tried to take it for a test drive. The pain is the I'm on Google University, which is a managed Google um, account. And if you're on a managed account already, you can't take it for a test drive. So literally, if I want to play, I've got to go and create another Google account that isn't managed just to be able to play. Now, I will say <clears throat> I've been really, really interested in mobile device management just because it's such a big issue. And even though I use a Mac and, and an iPhone, the mobile management capabilities from Apple have been lacking. And so I've seen that and I've also been I've also played with Microsoft Intune. And at the moment, Intune is by far the superior product. What I am interested in, though, is Google's got a heck of a lot of resources plowed into this. And I'm really wondering if Microsoft Intune is going to actually have some real competition pretty soon. Don't know. We'll see. Yeah, there's some interesting ta players in this space. I think you have things something like Mobile Iron and Good and AirWatch. You know, Curtis, have you seen this, you know, these kind of play out? Is this is this a space to be in for this type of devices? And is this a, is a good service to have for, you know, for an enterprise? I think it is a good space. And one of the reasons is that when you have a consistent MDM platform that you can use, it takes care of one of the biggest issues that enterprise uh, IT folks have with Android. That is that while there is basically one iOS, there are, at last count, about 49 million different Android versions. So while you can say we support Android devices, what you're really saying in practice, especially with BYOD, is that you're, you're supporting this, this cloud or constellation of Android, each one a little bit different, each one having its own quirks and to some extent it, its own management characteristics. Now, if you allow the MDM provider to, to handle all of those variations and all you have to deal with is the top level MDM interface, it makes your job a lot easier and makes Android a much more attractive solution for the enterprise. Yeah, we've seen we've seen VMware uh, have efforts around virtualization of the phone, and they seem to fail in the past. Um, and we've seen uh, you know I, I Intune actually succeed in that sense. But you know, Android inherently is a basically a, a multi-user operating system. And in the past, we've actually seen this type of thing, especially in mobile devices, fail. Brian, do you think that this is something that will succeed this time around? Do you think it has is has legs to move on? Is it is it a useful feature? Well, I think it's going to be a great feature. The the problem with VMware solution is that you actually had to scrub the phone down to bare metal, install the VMware shims, then install the uh, operating system containers on top of it. Long, far out of the capabilities of most of the users. Now, what this is doing is it's actually building it into the operating system. And it's almost like in a Linux where you can actually have multiple shells um, so that you can have an entire environment set up using the same common core operating system but have a completely different personality. 
so that you don't have to have dual SIMs. And we all know that dual SIM phones are actually kind of rare and they're expensive and they're hard to manage. And unfortunately, a little on the delicate side because you've got so many widgets in there and so many different things that you have to manage. So what Intune has done is great, but having this dual personality operating system sounds like it might have hit the sweet spot for the MDM world. And I think it could be a really good solution for BYOD. Yeah, the interesting thing is, you know, um, you know, the Microsoft, the phone, the Windows Phone OS, it's, you know, inherently its kernel is Windows 10, right, underneath the covers. It'd be interesting. I'm curious, Tiber, why, why do you think that this haven't, hasn't really appeared on the phone, uh, especially Windows Phone, uh, since it has the capabilities under the hood? Yeah, I'm, I actually got a briefing. It was, um, I actually got to hear Satya Nadella talk and we were in a whole bunch of um uh, journalists from worldwide talking about different things. And during the conversation with Windows Intune, they definitely mentioned that there was a multi-user capability in Windows Phone. And for the longest time, I actually ran Windows Phone, and I love Windows Phone, and I think the voice commander portion is still the best on, on the face of the earth. But maybe, you know, this is me just looking at it from the outside, I'm almost thinking that maybe just maybe there is a lack of commitment from upper management on wanting to really take over the mobile market. And, you know, we've certainly seen the uh, C-suite saying, hey, <clears throat> uh, we're going to sneak out of the mobile market. It's not really worth it for us for some reason. Um, and uh, I don't know, you know, it's Windows 10 has certainly had actually Windows 8. The Windows Phone 8 actually had the capabilities, and I just didn't see it being implemented. I didn't even see it in the API set, which was a little disappointing because it would have been really, really cool, even as a halfway step, to be able to kind of jail an app so that it would run separately and couldn't go and infect my other apps in case a mistake happened. And I'm sorry, Mr. Nadella, I think you, you've missed a really great opportunity. And I think Alphabet's going to beat you to the market. 